Hello and welcome. In this lesson, we are going to define continuity, which is a topic that really has been used in many previous math classes, including this one, actually, that we have used it without actually defining what it means for something to be continuous. So we're going to talk about what it means for something to be continuous, how you think about that, what that means if we tie it to the idea of limits, which we've been exploring in this unit, what types of things make a function not continuous at a particular value, which is something else that we have been talking about. And then we're going to wrap up with talking about two-sided continuity. So if you think about continuous functions in the most basic way, you're really asking yourself, can I draw the function without ever having to lift up my pencil? So a function is continuous when it has absolutely no breaks of any kind. Thinking about it, if you could sketch the entire function while never needing to lift your pencil, then you can say that that function is continuous. Now that's a conceptual way to understand it. It's not a really definite way. How do you prove to someone that you could sketch a function without lifting your pencil? So that's a very informal way to think about what continuity is. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna tie that idea to what we've already been talking about with limits. So we can say that formally, as X approaches any given X value C, the function must approach the value of the function there meaning that f of c must be defined. In other words, a function is continuous when its limit is the same thing as the value of the function. So basically, can you use direct substitution, if you think back to a previous section, can you use direct substitution to find that value of the function? Meaning the value you get when you directly substitute in is the same as the limit is the same as the value of the function. So there are really three requirements to show that something is continuous. The first is that you have to show it's defined at the number you're talking about, that the limit exists, and that in fact those two things are the same. The limit is the same as the value of the function if you just plugged in the C value you're approaching. So we have been talking about some reasons that things aren't continuous or values in which they are not continuous. So let's look at these three examples and let's determine which X values they are not continuous about. Thinking about that in terms of domain, what am I not allowed to plug in? And then state the intervals on which it is continuous. So number one, F of X equals three over X minus five. We know that X is not allowed to be five. And I want you to ask yourself why or what that looks like graphically. That is a vertical asymptote. So for which x values is it not continuous? It's not continuous when x is equal to 5. So if we were to write the interval of continuity, it's continuous everywhere else. So negative infinity up to 5. I'm using parentheses as opposed to square brackets because it can't be 5. Union with from 5 up to infinity. So it's continuous everywhere except when x is equal to 5. If you look at number two, sine of x over x, well, we can't have x be zero because then the denominator of the fraction would be zero. So this is continuous on the interval from negative infinity to zero and from zero up to infinity. If you actually graphed this function, which we're not gonna do right now, you would find out through the graph that there is a hole in the graph when x is equal to zero. Looking at number three, I want you to pause the video. I want you to think about this function, potentially maybe some factoring going on here, and think about where it's not continuous and why. Then unpause the video and see how you did. So here I have factored this, which means that I could simplify this as long as I note that x is not allowed to be three. And what's happening at three? There's a hole when x is equal to three. After I simplify that, there's another thing that x is not allowed to be. I can't have the denominator be zero, so x is also not allowed to be positive three because there is a vertical asymptote there. So if we were writing our interval, we can go from negative infinity to negative three, from negative three to three, and then from three up to infinity. Now, let's talk a little bit more in depth about these discontinuities, the holes, the the vertical asymptotes, let's talk about and formalize these four kinds of discontinuity. So we have been talking about holes and vertical asymptotes quite a bit, 
And a hole is basically a part of the function that has an open circle. The, the function doesn't exist at that exact value. Oftentimes, we will see that in a polynomial function, or sorry, in a rational function where a factor divides out. But what this looks like graphically is that there's an open circle. And again, often this may come from factoring. You could look back at number three and we pointed out a hole that would exist in that function. Here's the really cool thing about holes. We talked about how we could still have a limit even if there's a hole in the graph. Yes, the, the graph is discontinuous, meaning the function doesn't necessarily exist there, but the limit still does because we're approaching the same thing from the left side and the right side. So a hole in a hole, the limit still exists. That is called a removable discontinuity because you can still find the limit. We've talked a little bit about jumps discontinuities, meaning you pick up your pencil and you actually jump from one part of the graph to another. This occurs in piecewise functions or in functions that can be written as piecewise functions. But basically we jump from one part of the graph to the next. Unlike with a whole, the two-sided limits don't exist here. Two-sided limits do not exist, but one-sided limits do or can, I should say. This is called a non-removable discontinuity because the limit doesn't exist from both sides, right? I'm not approaching the same thing from one side as I am from the other if I have a jump discontinuity. A vertical asymptote means that our function is approaching infinity or negative infinity at a particular value. And in this case, the limit is not going to exist because we're not getting close to a finite number. So neither the two-sided nor the one-sided limits are going to exist. I'm going to say DNE. This is also non-removable because we can't find the limit as we approach that particular value. Last but not least is an oscillation. What happens with an oscillation is if you look closely at the graph, it appears to approach more than one value at the same time. And in this case, no limit exists, and this is also non-removable. So we sort of snuck down here a little bit, talking about removable and non-removable. A non-removable discontinuity means no matter what we do, the limit is still not going to exist. This occurs with jumps, with vertical asymptotes, or with oscillations. A removable discontinuity still has a limit, and an example of that is having a hole in the graph. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at these two graphs below. On number four, we're just going to state all of the x values at which it is discontinuous, and we're going to define what kind of discontinuity it is and whether or not it's removable. And then on number five, we're also going to write the interval of continuity. So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can list out the different x values first. What are the x values where this function is not continuous, where you have to lift the pencil if you're tracing this function? Hopefully you have had some time. So if I'm tracing this function, the first time I have to lift up my pencil is here when x is equal to negative 1. And then if I jump back on, I have to lift it again here when x is equal to 2. And here again when x is equal to 3 then when x is equal to 5, and then it's continuous after that point. So those are the four different places in which this function, y equals f of x, has discontinuities. Now let's define what they are. Well, at both x equals negative 1 and positive 2, these are both holes in the graph, and they are removable because the limit will still exist. If we look at 3, 3 is a vertical asymptote, and 5 is a jump, and both of these are not removable because the limit does not exist as you approach 3 or 5. Now, just I want you to note, as you approach 5 from the left or from the right, the limit would exist. As you approach 3 from the left or the right, the limit would not because it's going down to infinity, and infinity is not a finite number. Go ahead and pause the video and try to do number five, identify the type of discontinuity and the value it occurs, and then also write the interval on which it is continuous. So the only point of interest here is x equals two, 
and that is a jump discontinuity, which is not removable. And then if we were going to write the interval of continuity, it's continuous from negative infinity to 2 and from 2 to infinity. And make sure you're using parentheses so that we don't include 2. So we've looked at intervals of continuity. We've looked at why a function is discontinuous and whether or not the limit can still exist at that discontinuity. We're going to wrap up by talking about two-sided continuity. So we could also define continuity using one-sided limits. In order to do this, what we're going to say is that the limit overall is the same as the left limit is the same as the right limit is actually the same as the value of the function when we plug in the C value. So the left limit is the same as the right limit is the same as the value of C when we just plug it into the function. So if we look at this piecewise function in number six, what we want to look at is what's happening as we approach from the left, what's happening as we approach from the right, and what is the value of the function. And for number six, the only number where we might have an issue with continuity is when x is equal to one. Because everything smaller than one, this is a line, a line is continuous everywhere. Everything larger than one, this is a quadratic. A quadratic is continuous everywhere. So the only value we really need to check so that we can talk about continuity is what's happening when x is equal to one. So let's look at the limit as x approaches one from the left of our function f of x, which really just means let's plug one into here. That's gonna give me four minus one, which is three. Also notice since this is greater, less than or equal to, this is also what we get when we just plug one into the function. Now we're gonna look at the right-sided limit. The limit as x approaches one from the right of f of x is equal to what we get when we plug one in, four times one minus one squared, which is four minus one, which is three. Since this left limit is the same as the value of the function is the same as the right limit, this function is continuous. So I'm gonna write three little dots, that means therefore, therefore, f is continuous everywhere. And how do we say everywhere? Negative infinity to positive infinity. So if you have a piecewise function like this, the most important thing for you to check is what's happening at the number that's splitting the function into two different pieces. So why don't you go ahead and pause the video and see if you can work through number seven on your own and then unpause the video and see how you did. All right, hopefully you have had some time to work through this. Again, the number that we care about checking is one. So I'm going to look at the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of this function, which is going to be 3 times 1 minus 1 cubed, which is 3 minus 1, 2. And this is also f of 1 because that's how the function is defined, less than or equal to. Now I'm going to figure out what happens when I plug 1 into my other piece. So the limit as x approaches 1 from the right, we're going to use the x greater than 1 piece of f of x is four times one minus one squared. This is gonna be three. So now we notice these are not the same, which means the red part of this function is continuous and the blue part of this function is continuous, but when I am at one, I have to lift up my pencil to jump from one part of the graph to the other. So we can say this is not continuous, f is not continuous, at x equals one. So if I was gonna write the interval, I would say from negative infinity to one and from one to infinity, but I'm not including one because there is a jump discontinuity, which is not removable. So let's recap what we covered in this video. We started out by discussing what it means for something to be continuous, that we could draw it without having to lift our pencil and that the limit is the same thing as you get when you just plug the number into the function. We then talked about reasons that we might have discontinuities, such as vertical asymptotes, holes, jumps, or oscillations. We talked about how jump discontinuities, vertical asymptotes, and oscillations are all non-removable discontinuities because the limit does not exist, but that a hole is a removable discontinuity because the limit does still exist in the function. Lastly, we talked about how we can use two-sided continuity, and we specifically focused on in piecewise functions to determine if a function is continuous at a particular value. 
So I hope this video was helpful. Please make sure to write down any questions or post them below. And thanks for listening. I look forward to supporting you.